today's video it's all about melting disc brake rotors this is one here it's a vented disc brake rotor and the reason why I want to melt them today is because every now and then I get asked the question it's difficult to find cast iron well unless you live in the middle of a desert every garage you can go to will always have two disc brake rotors which is about 15 to 16 kilos with this one here and everyone knows where a garage is they're very easy to find disc brake rotors can be a little bit difficult to break up so what I use is an angle grinder and cut along there and along there and it breaks quite easily you'll see along there and there is the brake that saves you a lot of trouble swinging with a hammer also I'd like to show you another example of how disc brake rotors come this is a non ventilated as you'll see that's ventilated and that's non ventilated it's just a solid disc there they're both cast iron and very useful to melt there is one thing about disc brake rotors that surface there that's where the disc brake pad rubs on so it needs to be a certain hardness so it doesn't wear out too quickly so what I use ferrosilicon you don't have to use it but it's pretty well if you want a soft casting to machine it's a good idea to put in ferrosilicon into your cast iron if you're melting disc brake rotors this is the pattern I've made it's for a surface plate and what I'll be doing I'll be melting iron from the disc brakes and this is what the pattern's for to test out to see if the disc brakes work really well as cast iron normally I would dust talc on but this time I'm going to try something different I'm going to use graphite how dirty shit it is but see if it improves the surface finish on the casting now I've got an adequate covering of the facing sand this is the backing sand I'm putting on now I've got some deep pockets in here so we've just got to push our fingers in to make sure that they pack in properly This mould is a little bit different to how I normally do it. All the casting and molten metal will be in the cope, the top part of the box, and that's why the sprue hole is just there. So I've got to cover it up. Then put the top box on. Now we dust our graphite instead of talc. and we sieve on some more facing sand now we put our backing sand on
and we'll give it a quick ram. Now one thing I've got to do, I've got to make dead sure there's no soft patches around here because this box here will be on top and like I said all the metal will be in that box and if it leaks out it's a total disaster. Next thing I have to do is take the top box off. give the pattern a wrap now we'll see how easy the pattern is to get out Now the mould broke away a little bit there, so I patched it up. So now we've got to cut some in gates. Now what's left is I've got to cut a runner bar, but I'll do that on the other box. Now, get this piece of cardboard off. Now we can cut the runner bar in here. Now I've got a runner bar cut and that will interconnect with the two in gates on the faceplate mould. Now it's ready to be poured.
this is what happens when you've only got a 10 millimeter gap between a really thick iron casting and a wooden flask it just burns and I've tipped heaps and heaps of water on it but that box will be in the bin by the time I finish with this it's been about 15 minutes since I last filmed this box it's still incredibly hot and let me show you just how hot it is put some water on the end of my fingers now have a listen to this Yep. It's been five hours since I've poured this casting and it's still too hot to touch. But I'll just show you between here and the casting and the wooden box it's about 12 millimeters so it's any wonder it burnt. And the same for the other side and at the back it's roughly 20 millimeters. But what the amazing thing about this casting is all of the molten metal was in the cope in the top box if there was any kind of a leak it would have spilt the whole contents onto the floor but it didn't well the wedge test on the left is virtually all white cast iron it's extremely hard that was before I added ferrosilicon and the wedge test on your right the ferrosilicon did improve it's a bit more greyer in the centre but the edges are still white so what I'll have to do next time is add a lot more ferrosilicon to make a grey cast iron alright here is the surface plate casting it's all been cleaned up and it weighs 11.81 kilograms now what I found and you'll find too if you try big castings like this is they take a, quite a while to change from a liquid to a solid and they will penetrate into the grains and the sand and especially in these corners here it's very hard to clean out so what I used was an air chisel with a blunt end and that gets in those little corners in there and cleans them out very nicely here is the top side of the casting it might be a bit hard to see but what's happened is I've packed it just a little bit too hard and what happens is you get like an earthquake the sand expands and has little gutters and indents and I have to machine them out that's what happens with a really flat surface like this it's difficult to get these really smooth and the other point is with this wedge test you see it was all white you go here might even touch it. Now you'd expect this to be hard but it's a very large chunky casting and it takes a quite a while to cool down. Now if I file it, it files really nicely so this will machine all over.